الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد الله لا إله إلا الله أشهد الله لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على صلاة الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ به سبحانه وتعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وعبد الله ربه حتى أتاه اليقين صل اللهم عليه وعلى آله في كل آن وحين وارض اللهم تبارك وتعالى عن أحبابه وأزواجه وذرياته وصحبه والتابعين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله أنصحكم ونفسي الآثمة بتقوى الله أحثكم وإياها على طاعته أحذركم وإياها وبال مخالفته جل وعلا ومعصيته وأستفتح بالذي هو خير أما بعد يقول مولانا عز وجل في كتابه المحكم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار والفلك التي تجري في البحر بما ينفع الناس وما أنزل الله من السماء من ماء فأحيا به الأرض بعد موتها وبث فيها من كل دابة وتصريف الرياح والسحاب المسخر بين السماء والأرض لآيات لقوم يعقلون صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي المصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد 
صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والتسليم الحمد لله All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The one granted us life The one enabled us to breathe and live And who granted us all the blessings that we are surrounded with In the Quran, Allah ta'ala talks about observing the nature and sailing the oceans and of the ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah Allah Ta'ala says in fi khalq samawati wal ard those who use their reason to this truth there are many signs in the structure of the heavens and the earth in the constant alternation of night and day in the vessels which speed across the sea carrying goods that are of profit to people in the water which Allah sends down from the sky. So in all these things, are there are signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Quran encouraged Muslims and urged us to explore the world, to travel across the globe and to witness the nature and the beautiful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what, subhanAllah, we witness throughout the history that Muslims have been exploring. And not only that the Arab worlds, but also uh, there are many documents that shows that even the United States or the New World also was discovered earlier, way before Columbus was made by many Muslims. So... Our history in USA, it's really important that we learn and we understand our history. And today's khutbah is mostly about the early Muslims in uh, North America. So, uh, our history appears to be recent, right? The Muslims' history in the United States appears to be recent. But however, the presence of Muslim goes back to several centuries, not just very recent. If you are familiar with the term New World, it's generally used for all lands outside Africa, uh, Europe, and Asia. And that includes actually America and Australia. Official discovery of the New World is credited to the Christopher uh, Columbus. Uh, when in 1492, he sailed from Spain and reached several islands in the Caribbean, the present-day Bahamas and Cuba. During subsequent voyages, Columbus discovered his lands in uh, the Gulf of Mexico and Central America. Now the question is, when did Muslim reach this land? What is our history as Muslims in this lands where we are in? It is surprising that, subhanAllah, as I mentioned, that our history goes back even way before Columbus, according to some of the documents. But however, there are people who dispute this claim. To find the answer that when Muslims reached these lands, you have to go back at least seven centuries of American history, from 1300 CE to 2000 CE. So uh, there, there are numbers of growing documents and records that indicate people from the Muslim world arrived and lived here before. Obviously, records of the arrival of people uh, other than Columbus and contemporary European uh, explorer are sketchy. They're not well documented, well preserved. But however, there are still uh, some documents that indicates that. And there are documents that are reportedly said that when the Columbus and the subsequent explorers arrived here in the America, uh, in the New World, they were surprised to see that many lands when they reached here because Native Americans were living here, right? So they were surprised to see that many lands and places in the New World were named, uh, had Arabic names. And until today, some of the names still exist. For example, a small city in Ohio, south of Cleveland, is named Medina, M-E-D-I-N-A. So before, when I was uh, preparing for my khutbah, I actually Googled all these cities. So they do exist. It's not just random. Uh, name. So Medina, it was originally known as Mecca, 
But another Ohio town had his, this name, so the name was changed to Medina. Each of these following states, California, Texas, Ohio, uh, Nevada, Tennessee, New York, and Min uh, Minneapolis, all these towns, uh, each of these states has a town named uh, Medina. And several other states has named uh, Damascus, a village near uh, Campaign, Illinois, also named Muhammad, Muhammad, the version of Muhammad as Muhammad. A town in Indiana is named as Mecca. Another small town on the outskirts of Los Angeles is also named as Mecca. In Alabama, a small town is named Arab. A few miles from Arab is another city known as Egypt. Indiana has a small town named Morocco. So there are so many names that you will find, subhanAllah, are clearly Arabic. And these are not the new names that recently came. These names have been there for a long time. The earlier records, actually in 1312, about 180 years before Columbus arrived, African Muslims arrived in the Gulf of Mexico to explore the new world. They traveled along the Mississippi River. Most of them came from Mali in Africa and other parts of West Africa. It is reported that Abu Bakri, uh, one of the king, uh, sent several voyages by sea and they were known as Mandinga. Once the trade routes were established, the West African people conducted several explorations over the years. However, they did not record it. So that's a, uh, uh, that was the main reason that it is not well known or well documented because the explorers did not document their travel details. They used Mississippi River as their access route to the interiors of the New World. Right? And the earliest immigrants during his uh, famous voyage, the Columbus brought with him copies of several documents written by some of the famous Muslims who had sailed to the New World in the 12th century. Particularly notable the work uh, uh, Roger of Sicily. Al-Idrisi narrated the discovery of a new land by 80 Muslim explorers. His work was known as the Sea of Tears, a, a title that reflects the uh, perilous journey and uh, they explored 14 Islands. About half of these Islands were later traced back as the Canary Islands. And not only that, subhanAllah, and as I said in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala encouraged us in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Ta'ala says the meaning of the verse, and in the ships that sail in the sea that profit mankind, there are sure signs for people who apply sense. And also in the Surah 31, the verse 31, Allah says, don't you see that the ships sail in the sea with the favor of Allah that he may show you some of his signs. And a sign and also another verse in the Surah 36 verse 41. And a sign to them is that we carry their offspring in the loaded ships. Subhanallah. And not only that, the documented arrival of Muslims on the continent dates back to the times of Columbus who arrived in 1492 CE. Among his crew were several Muslim navigators because Columbus actually sailed from Spain was actually uh, the Muslims in Spain and we all know the tragic uh, history of Muslims in Spain. Uh, what happened to uh, Muslims and Islam set backs by the raising power and authority in Spain and those who uh, were Muslims, they actually pretended to be a Christian. They were Muslims, but they pretended to be a Christians and they were called Mariscos. By the 16th century, thousands of Mariscos arrived with the Spanish and uh, colonial armies in the New World. So the Mariscos also came along with uh, Columbus and many of them pretended to be Christian. However, when they arrived in the New World, they assumed that they can express their identity and the religion there. And some of the conservative Christians too, but they were not allowed to do so. And they were persecuted again 
So again, these people had to uh, hide their identity as Muslims, the Moriscos. So that is how the Muslims sort of, you know, disappeared from the image. And then obviously, after that, in the 17th uh, century, many Africans were enslaved and brought into the U.S., in the, the New World. And subhanAllah, we all know the very sad history of the dark history of the United States. And the famous amongst such African slave Muslims was uh, Suleiman ibn Dilalo, who was a practicing Muslim. He was well-versed in Arabic, wrote several letters in Arabic, translated uh, coin inscription, uh, inscriptions, and drew a map of West Africa. Other important slave names are Saleh Bilali, Yaro uh, Marmud, Lamain J, uh, Omar ibn Sayyid, Abraham Abdul Rahman, and Nicholas said. In 1730, uh, Ayuba Suleiman uh, Dilalo, a well educated Muslim merchant, was enslaved and brought to the Maryland. In 1767, Kunta Kinte, very famous from Gambia, was captured, enslaved, and brought to Maryland. Alex Haley based his best selling novel, Roots on the Struggle and Survival of Kunta Kinte. In 1788, Ibrahim Abdul Rahman was brought as a slave from uh, Guinea. He was known as the Prince of Slaves. And there is a documentary also, Prince Among Slaves. Uh, it's a very, subhanAllah, interesting documentary. In 1807, Yaro Marmud was freed from slavery. He was a well-known Muslim leader in the Washington, D.C. area. In 1893, Alexander Russell Webb was the first known white American to accept Islam in 1893. And subhanAllah, in 1865, around on the 19th of June, officially uh, the U.S. Army comes into the Texas and announces the freedom of slavery uh, of all slaves. And that's why the Juneteenth, which is known, which is coming on the 19th of June, uh, we celebrate. And subhanAllah, there are so many lessons. And one of the reasons, also, if you notice in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala talks about the previous histories, right? The history of Adam alayhi salam from the beginning of the world all the way to Nuh alayhi salam, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, all these prophets. The reason Quran mentions these stories so we can learn lessons from our history. So what, what are the lessons that we can learn from our history? So obviously, the first and foremost thing, that the, the, the pain and the struggle that our African Muslim, African community at large has gone through, and their strive and their struggle to establish Islam, to proclaim, to announce Islam loudly across the United States, the new world. You should never forget the favor of such great heroes in our lives. The, the, and subhanAllah, until today, the African community is still striving and struggling with many other things. So it's really important that we should include always being minority in the uh, United States. Always, always include all ethnicities, all background equally. And subhanAllah, that Unfortunately, we don't see that often, but that's a very important lesson that we learn from the history, that inclusivity always, always, equally, equally. And lesson number two that we can learn is, subhanAllah, we wished, you know, Allah knows best. If the Mariscos, when they came here, if they could, if they would have their, Allah knows best, you never know how the situation is, you know, the story of Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, when he was persecuted and tortured by Abu Jahl and Banu Khuza'a to just say Muhammad is a liar, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, na'udhu billah. So he bear torture for a long time, for days and days. Eventually, he uttered those words from his tongue. Ammar ibn Yasir, being a great companion of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the way, Ammar ibn Yasir, radiallahu anhu, was a son of African Muslima Sumayya, Salamullahi alayha, a Yemeni Arab married to her, uh, Yasir radiallahu anhu. But eventually he uttered those words and then he was weeping and crying. 
uh, that uh, he said these words, but his heart was firm on Iman. And Allah Ta'ala revealed the verse, إِلَّا مَنْ أُكْرِهَا وَقَلْبُهُ مُطْمَئِنٌ بِالْإِيمَانِ That as long as your heart is firm on Iman, whatever you say from your tongue will not take you out of the foldings of Islam. So we never know, but subhanAllah that also teaches us that, you know, often you, people go through that struggle, but, and, but at that moment people had, were persecuted and tortured for practicing who they are. But now subhanAllah, Look, what kind of freedom that Allah has granted us in this land. You follow any sect, any group, any, any religion. No one is persecuting you. No one is torturing you. But subhanAllah, still we see where Muslim stands now. We have absolute freedom. What kind of excuse will we give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment if Allah ta'ala asks us about our freedom, what did we do? What, what have we done with the freedom that Allah Ta'ala has granted us? Right? So that's the second lesson that contemplate on the freedom that Allah Ta'ala has granted us. The freedom of practicing our religion. The freedom of spreading out the word of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And acting upon it uh, regularly. And also third, SubhanAllah, these uh, people who were enslaved and tortured. But SubhanAllah did not give up on their identity did not give up on their uh, on their religion. Did not give up who they who were who who were they, and continuously spoke up and stood up against the cruelty and injustice and fought back. And now, Subhanallah, we are in the era where people are leaving Islam for silly reasons, and mostly the young folks. There are so many young kids. Because of subhanAllah, it's, it's not their fault. It's just because they're not edu they, they, they were not taught what Islam actually teaches. So there are many people, they just leave Islam because uh, of the cultural things in their homes. They just leave Islam because they didn't get the freedom in their home of whatever they want to do, of whatever they can do. But if you take a look at these heroes, they were persecuted, tortured, killed. And the persecution also is beyond our imaginations. And, but still they did not give up. So giving up on the greatest fadl and ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for little temptations and desires, wallahi, it's not worth it at all. It's not worth it at all. So no matter how crisis you are going through in your school, in your college life, or the pressure that you might be going through, and often people are ashamed to express their identity. Forget about young Muslims, adults even, including me being an imam, I used to wear a pant and shirt when I was going to outside. Just because I feel awkward on wearing thobe outside. And then one day I clicked to, subhanAllah, why am I changing my clothes? And then it clicked me that being an imam, if I am scared to express who I am and my identity as a Muslim, then what about the kids who were born and raised here and live and you know most of their day they spend with non-Muslims how would they feel about it and then I purposely started wearing the the thobes that would ident identify me as a Muslim uh, when I would go outside unless if I'm if I'm in the western dress right so maintaining identity and being proud Muslim that who you are Muslim being proud as a Muslim subhanallah that is one of the things and and also, you know, people think in order for you to spread Islam, you have to say, utter the words, tell people, hey brother, Islam is the truest religion, believe in Islam. No, you don't have to do that. There are so many people, many of you have experienced that one brother came and telling me that uh, when he would go to work out, uh, if he runs out of time for a prayer, he would just pray there. And one person had been seeing him praying in the gym, and he came to him one day, he said he wants to learn more about the religion. You don't really need to tell people, people are smart enough to see and observe your practices, your akhlaq, as long as you maintain your identity. If you don't maintain your identity, if you don't express, as, if you don't show the world as Muslim, then obviously you can't even spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are so many lessons to be learned, but we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless uh, all those people who have struggled to, uh, to establish Islam. 
and the identity of Muslims in this lands and across the globe. And may Allah Ta'ala allow us to learn lessons from them. And may Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم عملكم فاستغفروا إنه الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله صلى الله عبد الله ورسوله قال الله تعالى ولم يزل قائلا عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين أعلي يا مولانا كلمة الحق والدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه إليه ومن أراد بهم غير ذلك فهده يا ربنا سواء السبيل يا الله bless our community يا الله our families our parents our teachers our elders يا الله everyone who has requested us for prayers accept their prayers يا الله Ya Allah, those of our loved ones are left uh, this world, Ya Allah, forgive them, grant them Jannah, Ya Allah, Jannatul Firdaus, Ya Allah, and Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, save us, Ya Allah, our honor, our dignity, our identity, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and make us of all proud Muslims, Ya Allah, wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad, wa alihi wa ahli bayti, wa azwaji, wa dhuriyati, wa sahabi ajma'in, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله So, please spread your lines and keep your cell phones on silent mode. <clears throat> Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون فإذا قضيت الصلاة فانتشروا في الأرض وابتغوا من فضل الله واذكروا الله كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون وإذا رأوا تجارة أو لهوا فضوا إليها وتركوك قائما قل ما عند الله خير من اللهو ومن التجارة والله خير الرازقين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر 
Allah Akbar. الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, quick few announcements Islamic Relief USA is offering the magnificent Quran tour uh, by Sheikh uh, Yasser Barjas and Sheikh Muhammad Abbas and Sheikh Suleiman and Sheikh Hassan uh, Hussein. So it, it will be held uh, at uh, Chanel Country Club on uh, June 27th at 7 p.m. June 27th at 7 p.m. You can see the flyer and the QR code outside on the notice bo uh, board table. Uh, you can QR, uh, you can scan the code and register for the event and it's not really expensive. It's only $35 or something. So please help this organization, Islamic Relief, one of the largest uh, organization in the US and also uh, we are starting our summer camp from this coming Monday so it's a six-day summer camp from 1130 to 1 30 p.m. Uh, for ages 5 to 13 where we'll teach kids the Meccan history of the Prophet وسلم, for different ages and different groups and also the complete Salah inshallah so starting from Monday you can see the flyers 
both on the sister's side and the brother's side on the notice board. There is a QR code also on the flyer. You can, if you want to register, you can scan the QR code and register uh, for your child, inshallah. And also, uh, tomorrow, Saturday, we are taking our youth to the Perijin State Park for a hike uh, at 6 a.m. right after Salatul Fajr, inshallah. So, alhamdulillah, we've got almost 26 uh, registrations. Um, so, if any of you have missed to RSVP, the link is still available. And the, the, the RSVP is still open. You can RSVP to join us. It's for the ages 14 to 25. Uh, so uh, that's another event we have. And also, do not forget to drop donations generously. We have a request for a prayer. Uh, brother, uh, Dr. Kamal Kausar's brother, uh, whose name is Jahangir uh, Kamal, who passed away uh, just two days back on Tuesday. Uh, we'll make dua for him and also uh, any other uh, of our relatives who passed away. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكرنا وأنثانا اللهم من أحييته منا فأحيي على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وإخواننا يا الله ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم يا الله we ask you to uh, forgive brother Jahangir Kamal يا الله يا الله accept all of his good deeds يا الله elevate his ranks in Jannah يا الله grant him the companionship of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم in Jannah يا الله and the intercession of Rasulullah in the day of judgment and the shade of your arsh in the day of judgment يا الله Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, those of our loved ones, of our parents, our siblings, our relatives, Ya Allah, passed away. Forgive them all, Ya Allah. Elevate their ranks in Jannah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we all have to depart this world one day, Ya Allah. But Ya Allah, allow us to be ready and prepared for the departure, Ya Allah, and to arrive in your presence, in your hudur, Ya Allah. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa ahli bayti wa azwajih wa dhuriyati wa sahabihi wa alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullahu khair.